you a scoop of Guru. So before we get started quickly, I want to mention, it's mentioned more in my intro video, that the type of groups that I'm going to be discussing are a merge, a combination, that whole middle space in between an icebreaker, provide information, educational type of group uh, that's mostly just giving information to the clients, very little interaction on their part. And the other end of the spectrum, those wonderful dynamics that Irvin Yalom speaks about in therapeutic type groups. So this is, I believe, a combination of those two type groups in the middle that allows for a lot of processing. And I would like to say that we just process the heck out of everything. And also in my intro video, further explain the style that I use is I let them know they're the experts. There's no right or wrong answer. We're going to create something. Uh, we don't know what it is yet. And they're going to co-create it together by working together. And they're going to just throw ideas out. And I always just keep track of everything on the whiteboard as they speak. And then I offer further processing questions that we all stop and process together. So every topic could very, very easily, and they do last in my partial hospitalization groups, well into an hour or more. So let's get started today. Topic number one, journey of self-discovery. So we know that this topic can filter into 20, 30, 40, 50 subsequent groups easily that last an hour. What we're gonna do is we're gonna spend this time in our group talking about what is a journey of self-discovery. So I pose the question to them and I keep track of what they come up with on the board. So they're saying things like, I say, what is it? And they're saying self-contemplation. What does that mean? Well, self is about us. Contemplating involves thinking on a deeper level, how do we do that? What are some examples? Um, and I encourage them to give examples from their own lives, or if they're too nervous to do that, they're new to group, they wanna give an example of a friend that they imagine, you know, they wanna bring that to the table, or how they imagine someone might do this in general. So it doesn't have to be completely personal. And after they give an example, then we pause for a minute and breathe, and everyone else in the group has an opportunity to share an activated memory that that person's comment might have brought out in them uh, on topic. So self-contemplation, how do we do that? How have you done that? How do you think about yourself? What do you think about yourself? Authentic engagement comes up. What is authentic? True to yourself. What does that look like? How do you know when you're being true to yourself? How do you know what yourself wants? Engagement. Do I, you know, am I a hands off myself person? Hands off other people? Maybe my life has become managed by agoraphobia, generalized anxiety, a fear of being in public, a fear of driving, afraid to leave my house, trauma informed goals uh, due to past abuse and trauma? Am I also, you know, able to put my hands in life and make it and mold it and create something that I want it to be. So how far out of touch has that become? It's a process. That means it happens over time. It's growth. It's deliberate. It's something I'm going to do on purpose and I'm going to stop and think and process and just look at it from all sides. It's deliberate. Um, it takes time. What does it look like? Well, what, what will the future state look like when we do this journey of self-discovery? When we start to pay more attention to our thoughts and our feelings and what we think about our thoughts, that metacognition. Well, we imagine that we might be living more fully. Uh, ACT Therapy talks about a full, rich, and meaningful life. What does that mean? when I live more fully. I'm pushing the limits of myself. I'm meeting my goals. It's not completely fear-based. I'm able to do some exposure therapy and get outside of some of these things in my life that I've been avoiding because of fear loops. My window of tolerance 
is able to stretch and get bigger so I can enjoy more things in life without the anxiety completely taking over. What else would it look like in the future state if I'm able to go through this process? I might live more intentionally. So instead of just coasting through life and not thinking about it and being on autopilot and letting my dissociation kind of take over at times, I'm better managing that and reducing the impact of those things. And I'm setting goals and I'm having plans and I'm headed in a direction. What direction? Well, a valued direction. How do I know what my values are? We can spend several groups doing values assessments, figuring out what those top values are, are in your life and how much time you're spending actually doing activities and things that support those values. Am I living inconsistently with my values? For example, let's say family is my number one value and I find myself overtaken by an alcohol addiction and the alcohol addiction impacts me being able to relate to my family or even keep my family. Maybe my family is threatening to leave if I don't get the alcohol addiction under control. So my number one value is family, but I'm not living in accordance of anything that would support that. In fact, I'm directly causing my family to be driven away. What am I going to do about that? Uh, releasing defense mechanisms. So we thank defense mechanisms. We know they were there to get us through hard and difficult times and help us cope. But at some point in our life, we know that certain defense mechanisms are no longer needed. We're out of that difficult family of origin environment. We're in a safe place now. We can let them go. We don't need them. Perhaps they are now ineffective and not helping us get the results that we really want in life. What else does the future state of going on this journey of self-discovery look like? Well, it might be fun and I might be able to release my creative self. I might not be so filtered anymore or stifled or so self-conscious. Uh, it's non-judging. I don't want to judge myself anymore. I don't want to feel like other people are judging me. I want to release some of those cognitive distortions that I'm having and learn more about them. Also, those of us who have experienced trauma at some point tend to be potentially uh, over-controlled. You know, we're trying to control everything so the trauma doesn't happen again. We understand why that happens. Uh, it can be rather stifling. And those of us who have experienced physical sexual abuse to our bodies, sometimes we become very stifled with our bodies, keeping it in this small range and self-discovery can kind of help us to open up and be more fun and use our bodies more and be more comfortable with it. Who would do this? Now we can answer the question, who would go on a journey of self-discovery? Me? You? When? When do we start? Uh, is it something I start right now? Can I really start today? Should I wait? When do we start something like this? Have you started at some point in your life? What did that look like? What caused it to stop or be on hold? Was it a relationship with someone else? Uh, was it your relationship with yourself being self-destructive? What happened before if you tried to do it? Oftentimes I get the answer, I've never thought about any of this. This is all new. Where do I start? Um, Good question, we're gonna answer that one in a second. First, the why. Why would I want to do this? And then I say to them, I say to the group members, my why is because, you know, when I'm 103 years old and I'm in the nursing care center and I look back over my life, am I going to say, oh my gosh, I have this huge planet of regret on my shoulder because I lived my life exactly the way everyone else wanted me to live or because of everyone else or because I, I took care of everyone else to my own detriment or I lived the way I thought my mother would want me to live and now I can't change it and now my life is over and oh my goodness, I've missed out on so much. Or will I say, you know, about 50 years ago, I started on that self-discovery journey and I learned so much about myself. It set me on a different path, a different course of action. And I'm so glad I did it my way. 
It was beautiful and beautifully painful at times, but it's not brave unless you're scared, and I'm so glad that I did it. What is your why? Now, where do I start? That brings us to uh, asking the clients, where, where do you start with this? How do we get towed up to the start line? And we realize that we don't even know what or who we're starting with. Uh, we say we've lost ourselves. Great point. So that becomes our, our next group. This is where we'll end. So the next group will focus on how have I lost myself? How does that happen in life? So we will end this group here and video number two of Journey of Self-Discovery, labeled J-O-S-D in the title, will be next.